Uh, we have an excellent panel for you today. Our topic today is going to be solar panels and the effects of that in a real estate transaction. And we thought we'd bring up the different affiliates to allow you guys to know how do solar panels affect that. Right now, I'd just like to have everybody take a, a minute to introduce themselves briefly, and we'll start with Janine in just uh, about 30 seconds to a minute. Sure. Tell us a little bit about yourself and go down the line. Sure, my name is Janine Brown. I'm with Olympus Escrow, and that's located in Arcadia. You probably see um, my officer, Kitty Ip. She's here a lot, or Grace Chi. I'm here today to say hi and talk about solar. And if you have any questions after, please feel free to come see me. Okay, Angie. Okay. Make sure you speak into the mic. Sure. Hi, I'm Angie. Good morning. Um, we first American title. Um, this is actually not planned that I'm up here, but I'm here, so can't ever be too prepared. Um, and I'm here to talk about uh, I guess the solar today. And a little bit about me. I've been in title for about 15 years and counting. I've been in the real estate industry since I was 16, so it's been a long haul for me. It almost runs my blood, makes me wake up, and I dream of work all the time. Uh, so this is what I do. It's my passion. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. This is Richard Zaletto with Guaranteed Rate, branch manager, local office here in San Gabriel. Uh, I've been in the industry probably 30 something years, which seems like yesterday. Uh, I'm here today to kind of educate you guys a little bit about the lending side and what is the downfalls and the pluses for solar panels. Good morning, Robert Lerman with California Gold Coast Home and Commercial Inspections. Um, I do, um, I've had about 30 years plus in the construction industry, uh, working on every aspect of construction. So solar is just one of the things that I do as far as inspections go. Okay, I get hired by a finance company, they call me and say, I need you to go do these 100 houses. Okay, so I go all over the California, going to all these inspections. So I'm very familiar with how solar systems work. I know how they're supposed to be placed. And approximately the cost of what they would cost you and also set you up with vendors if you need a vendor for installation. So my background is pretty extensive, and I took a lot of green technology classes, which solar is just one part of our green technology, so I'm kind of give you an idea about it. It's actually an excellent opportunity for everyone. So as far as solar goes, um, that's my background, and we're ready for the next question. Okay, and my name is Mark. I'm an agency owner. I started my business in San Gabriel in 1988 and have been here. Uh, have an office here where um, we speak five languages out of our office and we have licensed staff. So that affords me the chance to go out and, and speak to the various real estate companies and teach them about the insurance industry. Uh, so anyways, we will start with Janine, and um, basically I'm going to give you guys a one minute warning to close up. So the effects of solar panels in the real estate industry as when it comes to escrow. Go. Well, well I, I actually was talking to my officers. Can everybody hear me okay? No? no. no. It's, it's, on, on. it's on, but it's on. There we go. Okay. A little bit better? Okay. I was actually, um, I have some experience with it, but I wanted to talk to my officers because I am the manager, so I don't do the files every day. And so when I spoke to them about this, escrow really doesn't have a huge part in this. Um, the only thing I can tell you is that we need to have um, a UCC3 filing of termination, which I have a copy up here, if anybody wants to see after it, and I can show you what that is. And then also a contact information. That's very important of who is actually, what salesperson is handling the actual solar. Because there are questions that they may call and ask us. Um, but really, it, when it comes to escrow, um, we're just making sure that the real estate agents are coordinating properly. Also, we're working with title um, because we can't, clear it, it's a lien. So we have to make sure that that gets cleared before we can close. Some of the things that we do see on the negative side is that there's time restraints as it is in escrow, and with solar, that may delay things. So the more prepared you are, of course, the better. Um, also, um, uh, some of the positives when I was talking to my officers is that the solar power companies are getting more organized, the larger ones. So it is, one, one of the things we were seeing is that the buyers weren't getting um, 
able to, to transfer the lease because of credit or because they didn't want to assume responsibility. So that was one of the issues. Now we're seeing that um, they're treating it like a lien. Um, credit isn't that much of an issue, and they're just adding it onto the house, just like if you were not to pay for your house, then they would put a lien on the house if you weren't going to pay the solar. So those kind of issues um, we're seeing in escrow are, are kind of alleviating. But as I said, for escrow, it's pretty easy. We're just coordinating with everybody. But without that termination notice, we can't move forward. Um, we don't really care if the seller's taking over or the buyer's taking over, just as long as we have um, instructions to do so. Awesome job. So now we'll go how solar panels affects the title industry. So take it away, Angie. Okay. Hi, good morning again, I'm Angie. Um, so, on a prelim, you'll see that there's going to be a, a lien on it. It's going to look like a lien. It's going to be shown on one of the items in the beginning of a prelim. Um, it'll either show as a UCC1, um, which is the same as the financing statement from the uh, from either the PACE or the CARO program uh, for the solar system. And usually once you have a UCC1, you have to have a UCC1. I don't know why it's kind of cutting in and out. Can you guys hear me without it? No. Okay, so once a UCC1 is filed, then you have to have a UCC3, which is termination of the solar uh, contract. Um, how it affects title also is that once it's shown on the prelim, something needs to be done about it, right? And anything that shows up on a prelim is something that we're saying, hey, this is going to be something we need to do in order to move forward on the transaction to transfer it to the buyer without any problems the property with, to the buyer without any problems. So uh, once that um, is filed on there, it becomes a lien and we have to have it either removed by a termination of the contract, or two, it has to be agreed upon between both seller and buyer, whether it's going to be stayed on the prelim or it's going to be transferred to the new buyer. So there's all these different variations of how the solar company would allow it to either be passed or it has to be terminated um, before we can move on on the title side to clear the act in the prelim. Um, you also heard of it as being called a lease Euro program. It's just a different name or labeling of it that the government is using as a subsidizing uh, way to, I guess, give money back to the homeowner who has already uh, had the solar system. Anything else? Uh, go on. Mm, let's see. I think that's pretty much it. I mean, it just depends on how the new buyers and sellers are going to transfer the solar contract and to if they're going to terminate it or if they're going to just transfer it. There's, that's pretty much a simple um, procedure. But the only thing you need to know is that the one tip I can give you is that once you get your listing, please get a prelim because the prelim will tell you whether or not this is going to be a problem. That way you can start negotiating with the solar company to see what they prefer, their method of being. They've, some, have, some have had ethros where they won't allow it to actually close because the solar company would not allow it to be transferred and they prefer that the whole thing be paid before they actually transfer it to the new buyer. So there could be some glitches. The best thing is to get the premium ahead of time so that we know who, we, who we're dealing with in terms of the solar company. That way we can follow accordingly to what their standards are to transfer it to the new buyer. Thank you. Awesome. Now we'll go to how uh, solar panels affect the lenders or uh, a buyer's ability to obtain a loan. So take it away, Richard. All I got to say is Angie pretty much did my whole spiel. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, as a lender, yes, we're very close and tied to title. So we're looking at a lot of different things, especially as a lien. Depending on the lien, it could affect the mortgage. So it may have to be, the solar panel may have to be removed um, and then reinstalled, but that's going to be a cost of whoever is going to absorb that cost of the new owner or the seller of the property. Especially if we're going into a refinance, we're trying to refinance a property, it's going to be the same situation. Depending on what kind of lien was filed against the property, the solar panels either going to have to be released, removed, something's going to have to be done to get that, that done. Um, as far as financing, when you're looking at it, if, if, if they're financing the solar panels, that's going to affect us because now i got to in include that financing cost into a cost of the loan, or what we call the DTI. So if the DTI is too high, we can't do the loan because now they've got to finance that solar panel. So there's pluses and minuses. Yes, the solar panels are very, very good because it does help you with the cost of electricity. On the downside, and I've had a couple of transactions already with solar panels, and we've had some interesting things happen. 
One was with the Pace, and this was kind of when Pace was really just starting to get going. I want to say that was about three years ago, and I had never heard of Pace, and I found out very quickly, Pace is a pain in the butt. <laughs> they would not support me. They will not do anything. They actually take precedence over our first lien. So as a lender, we're never going to touch a property with a Pace um, lien against the property for solar panels. And it's also, it's a tax. It's a tied to the property tax. It's not tied as a mortgage or a loan. So you're going to be paying this until that, that entire lien is paid off. But it will not go away. Um, we have to make sure also that there's no provisions in any of the leases or financing in, in that contract that you're buying or leasing that solar panel that will negatively affect the mortgage. Because naturally as a lender, Fannie, Freddie, Ginny, all of them are looking at what's going to be protecting our stance on the property. So we have to make sure that we're legally protected. Um, as of right now, that's about it. Thank you. Good job. All right. So next we'll, we'll, we'll have Robert Thurman talk about, um, I guess, inspections and whatnot in, in a solar transaction, I mean, in a real estate transaction when it comes to solar panels. All right. The main thing you have to remember for solar panels is friends don't let friends purchase, I mean, uh, get a <laughs> loan for a lease, okay? Because the lease and a purchaser basically have to qualify the same, okay? So why would you want to get a lease and lose about one third of your money? How many would like to give, give away $10,000 of their money that they could keep? <laughs> you would like to give away $10,000 today, please see me afterwards and bring your check. Just kidding. No, uh, <clears throat> that's what happens. You lose that money, okay? So you never want to lease. Never, 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 okay? And if you do lease, then there's a one page uh, form to fill out to transfer the lease from one owner to the other owner. Sometimes that may be a little easier, but when you're actually making the contract um, and you're trying to get into the, uh, get a loan for the house, what happens is they tap that amount onto the, to the top of the house. <clears throat> so say your house is 150,000 and you qualify for that, but it's got this lien on it for 30000 for the solar system. So now you don't qualify for that house anymore because you don't have the right income or whatever ratio. So that's what's been happening to some people when they, when they go to uh, close these deals, as some of the lenders might have spoken to you about previously. That was one of the problems. So if you want to avoid the lease, if you do get a lease, you want to try to negotiate a payment off, get it paid off, and just be done with it at the time of sale if you can. That would be the best thing to do is eliminate the lease program. Because the lease program doesn't give you full benefits as you do on the purchase. Although you've lost your money on a lease already, at least you can negotiate it, pay it off, and get the lowest rate. Because what happens is the rates can be fluctuating on a lease, so you're not getting the best as if you were to purchase it and get the bottom line, okay? That's the real important part. But if you do get caught up in a situation and you do have a lease description, there's only one page to transfer it over, so it's a fairly simple negotiation tool. Wow, this is a first. Robert is often very passionate about his business, and so he did a good job of uh, summarizing that. So, what what happens when solar, if if the solar's um, panels become um, unusable or, or there there there's a mechanical defect and all that? So I I talked with my home warranty rep, and basically they said, in, as far as home warranty goes, there's absolutely no coverage when it comes to solar panelings. All right. So that's why we didn't have somebody up here because they would be speaking for about 10 seconds and saying, no, it's not covered. <laughs> uh, but when, when solar, uh, how does solar affect the insurance in a property? It's super, super important for you or your buyers to notify their insurance agents that there are solar panels um, on a property and then the value of the panels because once the solar panels are attached to the house, all right, then they become part of the dwelling coverage. And by them, that I mean that they, they are considered structure, not contents. So what that does is that then that, that amount of coverage or the value of the solar panels is incorporated into the dwelling coverage. And so if the insurance agents 
has no idea that there are solar panels and say in a large house, some of these Arcadia homes that are 6,000 square feet, the solar panels, Robert, can be what, about 40 to 60,000, is that correct? Yeah, smaller houses, e a little bit less. Right, so, so then the dwelling amount of their insurance will be insufficient and in the event of a total loss or all whatnot, your buyers will not have enough coverage to replace those solar panels. So, so that's really, really important. On the flip side, some people put these solar panels on a detached structure like a garage or maybe on a landscape, you know, on an area that, that is, is not part of the house. Then that becomes what they call other structures on a policy. And normally the way insurance policies work is that we will afford 10% of the dwelling coverage. So if I'm insuring Brian's house for 500,000, he's gonna have 50,000, which is 10% on other structures. And what's thrown in other structures are gonna be the garages, detached garages, driveway, pool, sheds. And, and so if there's a 40 or $50,000 solar panel on that garage, there's not gonna be enough coverage if something happens. And the type of coverages normally that, that will cover on a solar panel is fire, wind, hail, explosion, falling objects. So those, it's, it's again, very, very important for you and your, your, your buyers when you guys are involved in a transaction that has solar panels that you are allowing the, the insurance agent to know that it exists because every company and I went across the board and asked a couple of my buddies from the different agencies and different companies that re they represent. Essentially what we do is that we do put the number of panels that, that a client has and we bump up the dwelling coverage uh, on our insurance policy um, on that regards. Now fortunately, oftentimes, even if they fail to disclose that they have solar panel, as long as there's enough dwelling coverage, it will still afford coverage but we don't want to go there if we don't have to because that's uh, E&O waiting to happen and, and we don't want that to happen. So what I want to do right now is, is to go back to the audience and see what kind of issues have you folks had as far as solar paneling goes and maybe the, the panel here, the distinguished panel here can help answer the questions. So have, have anybody dealt with solar panels in, in the real estate transactions with a raise of hands? Can I see? Okay. What's that, about 20%? So I thought it was more out there, uh, more solar panels and all that. But if, if, if those of you even that, that haven't dealt with it have questions, um, feel free to ask. Otherwise, this is going to be a very quick panel. <laughs> I actually have a question for Richard. Richard, um, for solar panels, um, is there a huge difference between FHA and conventional loans when it comes to the solar panel? The process of it, since of course we know that FHA is a little bit more stringent. Is there any anything in the difference of? I know that that um, with refis you still have to do it, correct? For for the um... yeah, the the biggest misconception is what, basically what Janine just said. There really is not that much of a difference between conventional and FHA. I've been doing a lot of educational classes lately, trying to educate realtors in the area. When it comes to FHA, that seems to be a bad word up here. But FHA really is a good loan, and it's not as restrictive or stringent as compared to a conventional loan. In fact, it's probably more generous than a conventional loan. But basically, when you're looking at all different types of loans, conventional, Fannie Freddie, or FHA or VA, the biggest thing we have to make sure is that there is some type of an alternative source for the power. Because if the solar panels fail and something happens, now you don't have electricity, which makes it now a health and safety issue. So we have to make sure we have an alternative source for the power. So you cannot just rely on the solar panels. But no, there's really no difference between the FHA or conventional as far as restrictions on the financing. Can I say something on that real quick? Um, a lot of times people, when they go to get a solar system, don't understand that um, if the power goes off, so does your solar system. What? Right, that's the question you ask. Why does the power go off? Because um, when the power goes off in the city, if your solar power stays on, what it does, it generates power and it goes back into the lines. So the guy out there on that line is trying to work on it to fix your power, it's going to get electrocuted. So they set the system up so you cannot use your solar if they have a power outage. So how many of you know that? <laughs> That's a good one, huh? So how can you fix that? 
How can you fix that? You can do it by installing either a battery backup. You can get a some type of a generator system, uh, either gas, natural gas, or diesel. <clears throat> and those are great resources to use. So that way, when you do have a, a power outage, guess whose lights stay on? Yours do, okay? <laughs> so that's a great idea. So if you go to get a solar system, you always want to get a package, okay? You want to get a package that includes battery backup or a generator system. Don't just sign up and get the basic solar system. You want to get the whole thing. So that way, when you do have a blackout, you'll be able to enjoy the full benefits and get it so it sustains your whole home. They have generators that sustain your whole house. So you can use your air conditioning, you can use all your lights, the whole house, and everything will be on, okay? So roll for it. Thank you. Go ahead and get an estimate for a solar system. Okay. Maybe backing on that, I just came back from Florida after the uh, Irma had hit. They had no electricity, and the solar panels that had, or any of the properties that had the generators, couldn't get gas to power the generators. Right. So another thing is to have a good electrician to put switch gear on. The switch gear will allow you to use your solar system without the city power. But you have to have an electrician that knows how to set that set that up for you. So you can also get that that is available. But you have to have quite a bit of room because those the backup batteries take a large amount of room. So you don't want a, a ton of batteries sitting around, then that's going to be a challenge. They're not just double A's. <laughs> They're not just double A's. <laughs> I know to power up a, a four or five thousand square feet house, it's, it's almost the size of a small car, isn't that? And I mean, now they're better, but I remember when I was looking into it. Well, it was quite a bit. The battery systems are only designed to use like your refrigerator and maybe a couple of outlets. They're not designed to power your whole house. So, any other questions out there? Yes. It's okay, if you go between the lease and the purchase, now if you have a lease, naturally the company will maintain your solar panel. If you purchase, you are near the home. How would that work? Okay, as far as the uh, lease goes, um, they're not going to do too much more than what you're going to do at your house anyways. Okay, if there's a problem, the lease company will come out and replace the panel, make sure that everything's working right, okay? Well, on, on a purchase, you have all those same rights, okay? Whoever put the system in for you has a warranty program that's usually good for about 20, 25 years, so no matter what happens, you're still covered, okay? You maybe say that installer leaves the area and they went out of business. Okay, the warranty from the, the company is still valid, so you can actually hire a different person that does solar, so it doesn't have to be the same person, it could be anybody that does installation. So the warranty covers all those items. The most you have to do for a homeowner is if you're in an extremely dusty area, is to kind of hose them off in the evening when it's cool or in the morning before it gets hot. Never do it when it's hot during the day. That's just to clean some of the dust off. That's about the most you'll ever have to do. Now if you don't want to do it yourself, you can hire someone, a contractor, so we just to kind of you know those uh, squeegees that you use to wash windows off on a pole? You use something like that to kind of just lightly wipe them off. You don't use any kind of cleaners or anything like that. You just just, roll, just get the dust off. For the most part, for the most of you, if you're in a good area where there's not a lot of dust, there's not any maintenance you're going to do. So as far as maintenance, there is none. If there's a problem with it, most of them are designed to tell you, hey, this panel's not working. There's alarms that go off. These little lights that start flashing. They answer your question. So all that's handled again by whoever's ha uh, put, installed your system. So it'll be that person or it'll be someone somewhere. So it should be covered under your warranty. Good luck if you find it a company. Pardon? Good luck if you find it a company. That's why you have to go with reputable companies that have a track record. Um, as opposed to, how does that affect in the insurance if, if the person is leasing versus owning? Well, owning definitely is the owner's responsibility. He better put it on the dwelling coverage of his, his insurance. Leasing is, it depends on how the contract of the solar works. So sometimes the solar companies might assume the liability and responsibility of all the panels, but oftentimes, um, from my sources, is that they, they defer that responsibility to, to the owner, um, the owner of the house, meaning that there's, the owner's still leasing it, but the owner is responsible for those panels. So if that is the case, we can also, all three companies of the major companies that I talked to, we, we can put that on our policies and then we list the, the leasing companies as additional insured. So 
So even if your clients are leasing it, it's prudent for them to, the buyers, to go and tell the insurance agent, hey, I'm leasing these solar panels and it costs 20000 30000 40000 I need to make sure that they're insured. Any questions? Yes. What's happened? And then you have a warranty. What happened during the year, like after three years or five years, the rental company declared bankruptcy when you were from there? The warranty, the warranty. Oh, repeat the question, Robert. Yeah, the, the warranty question, as far as uh, take, will the panels be covered under the warranty? Is that your question? And the company is out of business. Which company is it? Is it the company that also owns the panels or the installer? Because there's, there's, there's two questions involved then. I got you can handle both. Okay. If it's a manufacturer that has a default, um, I have never had that happen yet, but I suppose it could because they're usually fairly large companies with a lot of money, so they're not going to have that kind of a, a problem. Like you heard of Hyundai, yeah, that's a pretty big company, they're several billion dollars strong, so they probably won't go out. So we try to find a, a, a reputable company like SunPower, one of the bigger companies that are going to be around. See, that's the important things you need to know before you purchase. Now, if it's already purchased ahead of time, then, then we just have to do the research on it. But as far as the warranty goes, mo uh, the company that installs it, say the contractor, maybe they will go out of business, for example, okay? Then you still have the warranty from the company itself, which is valid, okay? So that should cover any other problems you should have. Any other questions out there? Yes. When you have the additional sun, uh, solar panel in your structure, it creates an extra liability. That's so correct. who's burdened or what's who's covering? Okay, so so let's let's just say one one liability might be the wind comes, the solar panels get lifted up, and now that, that panel goes and it flies and it hits the neighbor's car or house or individual. Right? So as long as it, it comes back to the client as far as the old home buyer and all that, and, and, and there's no negligence involved, the, the insurance policies will, will afford liability coverage up to the limits of the policy. All right? Um, now, let's just say that the installer installed it incorrectly and didn't pull down bolts. He was supposed to put down lag bolts or whatever, and he, he just put a couple. And, and so then, then insurance companies would probably, and a good lawyer, would probably go after that, that installer for the liability. So it really depends on what was the cause of the, uh, the resulting of the, the injury sustained by the person that was affected. Does that answer your question? Or give me an example of what liability you're, well, you're expecting. That's partially answer my question. Because when you buy, you have a house with solar panel, or you have another one without. Would the, the insurance cost the same? Because there's an extra burden in liability. Li Liability-wise, no. The liability is, is absolutely the same. It's the, the structural, because remember, I'm adding twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 more in coverage to, to absorb the cost of the dwelling amount. So the liability is already assumed in that. Oh, I see. Okay? It's so there's not an extra cost for not that. Not an extra cost. No, not liability-wise, but, but only for the dwelling. So if you... The, the both of you bought a house and your house has a, a solar panel and it was twenty thousand dollars or thirty thousand versus her. I mean, the, the cost of insurance will be very negligible, maybe under fifty dollars, around hundred bucks more between your two policies, very minimum. Okay. Uh, Mark, I have. Oh no, that's okay, Mario. Next. <laughs> <That's just kidding. laughs> Mario and I started pretty much the same time at this board. But, but this is yeah, that's a wild bag. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, question. Now, you have solar panels, the house burns down completely, and then so does the solar panels go. So, is that covered? Oh, I'm, I'm glad. Thank you for asking that question because I, I forgot one main point. You guys got to make sure that whoever you deal with, whether it's XYZ company and all that, that you have replacement costs. Um, all right, on, on your policies, because here's the difference. If, if you're on a, what they call an actual cash value policy, let's say that Mario's solar panel, he paid 20000 for um, 15 years ago. All right, if he has an actual cash value policy, the company will only pay him what a depreciated amount of that solar panel is. So maybe that, that solar panel now is only worth seven six thousand $6,000 because it, it has gone through its lifetime and so they're going to depreciate for that. 
Whereas, say those solar panels now cost thirty thousand. All right, even though he only paid twenty thousand, if he had a replacement cost policy on it, and it doesn't matter what company it is, they would pay for that policy. They would pay for the extra amount of that. And don't forget that it doesn't just involve the panels; it involves all the the stuff that goes to make that solar uh, panels um, effective and efficient. Yeah. So and working. So. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. One last question. Yes, Tom. Yeah, Robert, could you t tell us who you would do the Cadillac and the Mercedes companies in the business? I'd love to find that, Robert. What was the question? Juan, in the solar Cadillac, Cadillac and the Mercedes. Mercedes. The solar Mercedes. Mercedes. Oh, you want the Mercedes or the Cadillac? <laughs> I think they are. Okay, well, it's right. the Rolls Royce. Okay. I think I think it is, is maybe a better question to that is is there a form that they can go on to check you know the the, the soundness of a solar panel company you know like insurance companies are rated on on by by AFS and Standard and Poor where do they start to to that's a good that's an actually a really good question. Um, I just know of several companies that have been around for a while, so I try to pick one of those. But you know, we have that thing called Google, and so you go on there and you can you know type up you know you can actually ask specific questions about how long these companies have been in operation. Moving to Google, okay, and that'll kind of give you some some um, idea. So if you want to know that, they probably give you more stats than I probably could. I just know some of the local vendors that I work with. I only work with several hundred of them. But I try to find the local person in our area, uh, whoever it might be. So um, if you ever you need to know that information, get in touch with me later, and I'll be more glad to try to find somebody local that's been around for a while. So awesome. um, that's, I think that's appropriate. So thank, thank, we always have to worry about liability issues. That's why I have insurance. I, my guard's always up. But thank you for uh, allowing this distinguished panel to present this wonderful topic to you guys. I wanted to thank my panel, uh, Janine Brown from Olympus Escrow, Angie Tang for filling in and pitching. She knows her stuff because I got her on her phone and, and said, you know what, I need you because somebody just couldn't do it. And so she stepped in there. So she had to wing it, but she didn't wing it. She knew the answer, and that's because she started when she was 16 about two years ago. Um, then, then Richard, my buddy there, San Gabriel Comprador, right there, um, and of course Robert Thurman. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. What a very